by sea, land, and air, we prosper. That's the official motto of the city of Vancouver. It alludes to the various means of transportation utilized by the citizens of this beautiful port metropolis. Notice there's no mention of warp pipes. And that leads to one of the many questions I have in regard to this game. First, how did Mario, Luigi, and indeed the entire Mushroom Kingdom populace get to Canada? I mean, it's, it's not like there's a red eye to British Columbia flying out of level 1-1. And, and how did Sonic get there, for that matter, from wherever it is he spends his free time these days? Secondly, two-part question. Who let Donkey Kong, Bowser, and Dr. Eggman, three gentlemen with criminal histories including but not limited to offenses such as kidnapping, extortion, and war crimes, compete in the Winter Olympics? Isn't there like a committee or something? But lastly, and perhaps most importantly, who expects us to believe Mario and Sonic would be interested in burying a hatchet anywhere except each other's backs? Come on, remember Sega does what Nintendo don't? These two mascots were the nucleus of perhaps the fiercest console war the gaming world has ever seen. And I highly doubt time has healed those wounds enough for them to just... I mean, I mean look at that. They just high-fived. This is ludicrous. We buy into a lot of nonsense as gamers. But come on, Mario and Sonic do not high-five. This game is clearly some kind of propaganda created to make us think the war is over. Anyway, this is Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Winter Games. And this game obviously has a lot of explaining to do. This is a 2009 sequel of sorts to the 2007 original Mario and Sonic at the Olympics. And like its summary predecessor, Mario and Sonic at the Winter Olympics is a collection of mini-games based on real-life Olympic events. The game features 27 events in total, and they range from more realistic interpretations of snowy sports like hockey, skiing, figure skating, and snowboarding, to more Nintendo interpretations of those events complete with all the items, power-ups, and performance-enhancing drugs Mario has been bringing into sports for years. And that's great because these so-called dream events are, in most cases, much more fun and entertaining than their feet-to-the-ground counterparts. As with any minigame compilation, the individual games themselves definitely vary in terms of quality, and the quality curve coincides with the use of waggle. In games reliant on button presses, things tend to be a lot more fun and engaging, and the same can even be said for games which use tilt, like skiing. Hockey wasn't bad either, although it does feel like it should have been way better, and some of the other games are fairly solid too. Even curling. But then there's other events, events like the snowboarding halfpipe, which you literally control by shaking and twisting the Wii Remote like an idiot. Wii Waggle has really been a plague for Nintendo's console, and unfortunately for Mario and Sonic at the Winter Olympics, many of the events rely on it way too much. Translation, well, casual gamers and younger players might not mind, but if you're the kind of person who wants tight controls and gameplay consisting of more than mindless arm waving, you'll probably be disappointed in Mario and Sonic at the Winter Olympics. One of the nice things about the game is that you earn money by competing in the events, and you can spend that cash at a picturesque Canadian winter village on things like stickers for your gear and new winter sports apparel for your me. It's a nice touch, if a bit cosmetic, but really I think it's endlessly entertaining to dress up my me in pink snow pants. Honestly, the biggest problems with this game deal with concept, not execution. 
Mario and Sonic at the Winter Olympics is pretty well done, it's just not thought out as well. Although it does exactly what it sets out to do, and that's give kids and casuals a waggly compilation with familiar faces, and it does it very well. Indeed, it's perhaps one of the most polished and well-executed generic games you'll play on your Wii.